Hello students and welcome back to bankexamstudy.com. My name is Ramandeep Singh. In the series of sharing important late, uh, financial awareness questions, till now we have shared six uh, sets. Today we are doing the seventh session, right? For IBPS, RRB, GBO, Scale 2 and Scale 3 2023 exam. Let's start the session. Very important questions we are going to do. Uh, students, IBPS, RRB, Scale 2 and Scale 3 course, we have already started for 2023 session. We are providing video classes, quizzes, notes and the test series. Link to join the course is available in the description. Please check the description. Uh, consider the following statements regarding the Financial Stability and Development Council. So what is Financial Stability and Development Council? I mean, it is not a statutory apex council. Uh, it is non statutory, first of all. So first one is wrong. The establishment is recommended by Raghuram Rajan committee, which is correct. Chaired by RBA governor, which is false. It is chaired by the finance minister. So only the second point is correct. Okay, this is very important for the examination point of view. If you want to read in depth. So now you can read without my face. Okay, so pause the video and you can read it. Let's move forward. What is the minimum amount of default for initiating pre-package insolvency uh, res resolution process? Students, I would highly recommend you go to go through IBC code 2016. IBC code 2016. And this one is available in the financial awareness section. Financial awareness section of the IBPS RRB scale to scale 3 course. Very important, uh, I would say lecture that I have done in the IBC 2016. Pre-packaged insolvency resolution uh, process, it was updated in the 2021. If the minimum default amount is 10,000 rupee, minimum default is 10,000 rupee and maximum 1 crore rupee, then it is eligible under pre-packaged insolvency resolution uh, process. Okay, so 10 lakhs minimum. So CIRP jo hai, corporate insolvency resolution process above 1 crore. Uh, so minimum 10 lakhs, maximum 1 crore. It is under pre-package insolvency resolution process. Yahan pe ye eligible hai. Uh, especially for uh, MSMEs, this was introduced. So I have explained the procedures, the processes in depth in the course. So please go through that. That's very, very important. Which entity regulates a credit information company? CICs are regulated by Reserve Bank of India. Nothing complicated here. Okay. CICs are regulated by Reserve Bank of India. So which of the following statements are correct about DICGC? Deposit Insurance and Guarantee Corporation. So is DICGC, uh, it is 100% owned by Reserve Bank of India. And there is an insurance of 5 lakh rupees. The insurance is not... Uh, 1 lakh, it is 5 lakh. The RBI governor is not the chairman. He can be a chairman, but most of the times the chairman is appointed by RBI from its directors and not necessarily governor. So any of the directors of RBI can be the chairman of DICGC. Okay, so may or may not be the governor. Okay, so only one is correct. DICGC is 100% owned by the Reserve Bank of India. Uh, so the second uh, option is not 100% correct. RBI governor can be the chairman of DICGC, but any director can also be uh, a DICGC chairman. Which of the following statements regarding the IBC, uh, the insolvency and bankruptcy code are correct? So is it a statutory body, IBPI, administrative control, rest with the Ministry of Finance? It allows for restructuring of firms without involving cross-border jurisdiction. So cross-border jurisdictions not allowed here. Uh, obviously, IBBI doesn't have that many resources. And I guess it is under the corporate ministry. Okay. So only first one is correct. It is a statutory body, but second and third are not correct. As I told you, it is under Ministry of Corporate Affairs. The administrative control rests with the Ministry of Corporate Affairs. And IBC does not allow IBBI to go for the cross-border jurisdiction. So they are not allowed for that. Okay. The after the subprime crisis and global financial crisis in USA, the G20 and its financial stability board introduced legal entity identifier. What is legal entity identifier? For example, in India, 
to uh, to know the identity of a person or an uh, you know artificial person for example a company you have pan there is permanent account number for an individual or a company or an huf but what about uh, international transaction how you can uh, know the identity of an entity uh, to whom you are sending anybody in, in our country sending money to for example a person in nigeria or a person in let's say us how how would you how would we know to make the international transaction secure uh, there is a legal entity identifier system which is a global uh, legal, uh, global uh, legal ent entity identifier it would help to identify the uh, you know non individuals so it is a 20 digit alphanumeric code 20 digit alphanumeric code in india the clearing corporation of india is uh, is going to is responsible for implementing the legal entity identifier okay which of the following statements are true with regard to the cryptocurrencies in India? It <coughs> uh, regarding the recent notification by finance ministry classifying the crypto transactions as a form of money laundering and subject to regulations under PMLA Act. So it applies to only cryptocurrencies transactions that involves fiat money. It exempts non fungible uh, tokens from PMLA norms, it requires crypto entities to maintain records and follow KYC norms. So recently, the finance ministry asked those crypto exchanges to comply with the KYC norms. So this one is correct. It does not prohibit uh, crypto transactions altogether in India, it grants legal tender, it does, it doesn't, right. So uh, KYC norms are applicable, that one is correct. You can read it, you can pause and uh, you can read the explanations as well if you want to. What is the purpose of risk weighting of assets while calculating the capital adequacy ratio CAR? I would highly recommend you to go through Basel 3 norms in the financial awareness section. That would help you to understand this question. Okay. So the purpose is to reduce the amount of capital required for low risk weight, uh, risk assets to increase the amount of capital required for high risk asset to incentivize the banks. No, that's not the case. So basically, the purpose is to increase the amount of capital required for high risk asset. For example, for venture capitalist, I guess that is 150% for credit card loans. So there is high probability of default when it comes to credit card. So higher weightage is supposed to be given to credit card loans. But if the money is lent to government to the central government money lent to central government, so if the money is, is lent on the sovereign bonds or money held in the gold format, obviously the risk should be less. Okay, the risk is less. So less capital is required in that case. So the risk weightage of capital helps uh, to increase the amount of capital required for high risk assets. Okay. So students IBPS, RRB, GBO, scale two and scale three course that is available on bankexamstudy.com. I hope you like the questions shared today. They, they are very, very important questions. Uh, rest of the questions are available in the previous sessions. Links are available in the description. Please check the links. So that's I guess all for today. List of our students who cracked the exams of Bank of Maharashtra journalist officer recently using our study material. All these students are used our study material and they cracked the respective exams. I'm really, really happy for them. RRB scale 2, scale 3, 2022, 2021. All these students that took our courses in the past and they cracked the respective exams. I'm really, really happy for them. If there is any doubt in your mind, anything in your mind, you can ask your doubts and we are going to answer your doubts. Okay. So students, that's all for today. Thank you and have a very nice day. If there is any doubt in your mind, 9067201000. This is our WhatsApp number where you can ask your doubts and we are going to answer your doubts. So that's all for today, students. Thank you and have a very nice day. Bye-bye.